Welcome back, Amiibros, to No More Heroes. In the last episode, with the help of Thunder Ryu's spirit, we navigated our way through the woods to the entrance of Darkstar's castle. And in this episode, let's not keep the man waiting. Welcome to my castle. I heartily receive you, my son. All right. Enough with the jokes. A joke? You don't remember me, Travis. I am your true father. Blood does not make such mistakes. Jeez, you are full of it, aren't you? Coupled out with the castle, and the dude's clearly compensating for something, Travis. It's a good story. I'll give you that much. You see, this is just another story. Even if you were my father, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters here is who's best. Remember, son. Engraved into your memory is the night when everything changed. I fell to my feet right before my son's eyes. Do you not remember this? In my deepest memories, I hear someone calling. I remember. It was a hot summer day. There was someone standing behind my father and mother. That person killed my parents. The face, I can't make it out. Who are you? Remember. Who are you? Try harder. I think I can see it. Almost. Do you recognize the face? Now I remember everything. Well done, son. She was the girl you loved. You're still as gullible as ever, Travis. Think. Why would he be your father? I guess you're right. I don't have a father. At least not anymore. You killed him, didn't you? Yes. And that's why you became an assassin. To kill me. Now I get it. All those fights. It was for this. I lost everything that I ever cared about. That bitch took everything. I can help you to get even. She's a good con artist, that's for sure. She set up some killer fights. So you and I finally meet. You should thank Sylvia. Jean, there's just one thing I want to ask you. Who are you? Me? You don't need to know. All of your trivial questions will be answered in the afterlife. Answer me! It's impossible. Impossible? What do you mean? It's too terrible. It alone would jack up the age rating of this game even further. So what? Who cares? What if the game gets delayed? You don't want this to become No More Heroes Forever, do you? All right. I'll fast forward this so you can tell me. Okay. I'll make it short and quick. You are my half-brother. You know that manga called Miyuki? The Japanese one? Well, it's like that. Your father abandoned my mother to run off with your mother. It broke her heart beyond repair. She killed herself. Knowing I had nowhere to go, she took advantage of me. Ever since I can remember, she molested me. We lived in this rotten apartment, and I was his slave. Every day I cursed his soul. I swore that I would kill him one day. The cursing didn't change anything. That's when I decided to become a killer. With no money to pay for training, I paid with my body. But you? I bet that son of a bitch looked like a hard-working family man. That was all an act. He didn't give two shits about cleaning up my life. So I decided to clean it up myself. That's why I do what I do. And I got what I wanted. Killing him in front of your very eyes. That's my story. Imagine that. You and I. Brother and sister. Now you see what I've been through? Maybe it had to be done, but vengeance begets vengeance. Foreshadowing. You're right. Go ahead. Draw, brother. All of your sorrows end today, Jean. 
the current ranked one assassin of the UAA because she killed the former ranked one assassin of the UAA. It's Jean! And she starts out the fight by entrapping us in an arena using Darkstar's weapon. Clever little bugger she is. Anyways, you ever wonder what would happen if Ronda Rousey and Bruce Lee raised a child together? You'd most likely get Jean, minus all the traumatic baggage. An expert in hand-to-hand -hand and mixed martial arts, Jean will kick your ass if you aren't careful. She can evade your attacks with ease and counter your grabs with an arm bar. Instead, when you stun her, simply attack with your bean katana and avoid grabs at all cost. Like I said before, she starts the fight by entrapping you in a circular arena using Darkstar's weapon, and gradually, as the fight progresses, the arena gets tighter and tighter, forcing you to confront her and be more up close with her. Starting off in her first phase, Jean will use a basic three-hit combo ending with a charged palm strike. Quick slide out of the way in order to get a few hits in. She has a power stomp move where she'll jump in the air and once she lands, she'll unleash a shockwave that, that really, really hurts. So yeah, be sure to avoid that. In her second phase, her charged palm attack becomes a two-hit combo. She'll charge at you with her palm but then try to sweep your leg. To avoid this, dodge roll backwards, then to the side. Her third and final phase sees her modifying her charged palm strike, turning into a three-hit combo, but it largely plays out the same. Um, as with Shinobu, as well as some other boss fights that we've faced thus far, patience is a virtue with her, so no bum rushing. Having the infinite battery for the Spocky Mark III makes this fight so much easier, because every time you swing, you will drain the battery on your bean katana regardless if you make contact, and considering that Jean can avoid our strikes, altogether unless she beats herself wide open or she's stunned? Yeah! Safe to say you do not want to be swinging all willy-nilly because then you're in real trouble here. You do not want to be left wide open for Jean because as you saw right there she is quite nimble. This is why I stress practicing the assassination missions if you're going in with the Tsubaki Mark III. It will help you a ton. But in summation, Jean is actually one of my favorite fights in the game. Simply because of how just unconventional she is compared to other assassins that we've faced thus far. Really, the only person that gave us trouble up to this point was either Shinobu or Bad Girl. But Bad Girl, we can argue because she, again, she had a shit of health. Shinobu, she hurt, you know, and she gradually got tougher the more health you drank. Jean feels like a massive step up from past assassins that we've faced this far. Keep in mind, Jean is only doing this with her hands and feet. You know, she doesn't have any other weapons at her disposal, like a bad grenades or even twin swords or anything like that. She's using her bare fists and feet, which, again, hot damn, Jean. <laughs> you really know how to make a fight a lot more interesting. Plus, again, she's outright terrifying because like, like, she's avoiding your strikes like, with, with ease, as if she can like, process them at such a speed that it's almost inhuman. You know, and no other assassin thus far has been able to really do that to us. So she really is a one-of-a-kind fight, and I, and I love that so much about her. You know, I mean, granted, I can understand a lot of people having a hard time with this fight. I did when I first played it, but again, like I said, Take your time with her, take your shots wisely, and you should be good. Um, and as you as you saw before, Jean had a backstory that was fast forward. Uh, yeah, it's not for the faint of heart, but I will be putting it at the end of the video. Just viewer discretion is heavily advised. But yeah, we're almost done with Jean. Just gotta get a few more hits in, avoid that stomp right there. Don't wanna get hit too hard. You only have one health pickup, so use it wisely. Alright, Jean's almost done. Gotta get one more strike in. Oh, come on, almost. Oh. Do it! Right. Brother, please don't kill me! Sorry, Jean. This hurts me, too. We're both in the same business, after all. And I've... had enough. Time for you to rest, Jean. Good night, Travis. I hope your next dream is a more pleasant one.
It's over. This is where it all ends. Right, Sylvia? There's just something so tragic about that scene. And every time I view it, just Travis and Jean having that exchange right there, it just gets to me, you know? But that's it. It's been a long road, but we finally crossed the finish line. We came, we saw, and we slaughtered. Every single assassin that was in our way fell by our beam katana. Death Metal, Dr. Peace, Shinobu, Destroy Man, Holly Summers, Let's Shake, Harvey Moskowitz Volodarsky, Speedbuster, Bad Girl, and finally, Gene. All of them were defeated, and were finally ranked one of the UAA. So, without getting what we were promised, it's a hollow victory. But, maybe it's for the best, Travis. Sylvia's a bitch anyway, and you could do so much better than her. But, <sighs> normally, this is where we would end things off here. But, there is still one loose thread that we're forgetting about. And, next time on No More Heroes, we'll be taking care of that loose thread. See you guys then. All right. I'll fast forward this so you can tell me. Okay. I'll make it short and quick. You are my half-brother. You know that manga called Miyuki? The Japanese one? Well, it's like that. Your father abandoned my mother to run off with your mother. It broke her heart beyond repair. She killed herself. Knowing I had nowhere to go, he took advantage of me. Ever since I can remember, he molested me. We lived in this rotten apartment, and I was his slave. Every day I cursed his soul. I swore that I would kill him one day. The cursing didn't change anything. That's when I decided to become a killer. With no money to pay for training, I paid with my body. But to you, <laughs> I bet that son of a bitch looked like a hard-working family man. That was all an act. He didn't give two shits about cleaning up my life. So I decided to clean it up myself. That's why I do what I do. And I got what I wanted. Killing him in front of your very eyes. That's my story.